back, everybody. Alex, how you doing? All right, doing great, doing great. How's everybody doing? All right, so uh, we have a special treat. Something that you know we talked about doing is uh, spotlights. So, Alex, um, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Well, basically, spotlights are uh, just giving uh, general information on, uh, be it if it's a, uh, an actor or actress, uh, director, producer, uh, stuntman, just trying to shine some light on some individuals that don't get a lot of, uh, a lot of publicity and just aren't in general conversation when it comes to like films. Um, yeah. so by doing these spotlights, we're going to basically just give general information about the individual. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, some of their high points and their career and just talk about a couple of their movies real, you know, briefly to, to kind of give you guys an idea of who it is. And that way, if you want to do your own research and go follow these people, you know, maybe it'll be somebody that you won't know about. Go, oh, wow. Let me go check them out. You know, just bring a little bit more light to individuals and you can go follow them and enjoy their content, enjoy their, uh, their movie careers. So that's a spotlight. And, <laughs> and that's right. That's right. And how this kind of came about is that, you know, we end up talking, we talk about a lot of movies, but what we end up realizing is that like, whether it be a lesser known actor or director or whatever, or someone who's more well known, we start to see how they have influenced their industry or roles that they've had and things that they've done that we weren't really aware of, you know, doing our research about movies. Uh, right. So it's just a, a way for us to just kind of explore. And like you say, like I said, you know, basically giving these people flowers, people who maybe haven't gotten them the way they should. Exactly. And of course, it's going to be some more well-known people, obviously, but you know, some of these folks just kind of have gone under the radar for years and you don't yeah. know anything about them and you've seen them, but you don't know their name. And, you know, just trying to bring a little, shine a little light on them. Exactly. Exactly. So, so who, who do you have for us for this first inaugural episode? Well, I'm going to, uh, going to talk something about, uh, some, some, uh, sense of light on Spike Lee, one of my favorite, uh, uh, directors, producer, and actor. Uh, his full name is, um, Shelton Jackson Lee. And he was born March 20th, 1957. He was born in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, his parents, uh, his mother was a uh, school teacher. And his father was a jazz uh, musician and composer. Uh, shortly after he was born, he's got uh, four other siblings, I think four or five other siblings. Um, they moved to New York. And uh, once he grew up, he uh, ended up enrolling in uh, Morehouse College. He graduated from Morehouse. Then he started doing some uh, graduate work in, the, in New York at uh, Trish College um, and earned his uh, master's in fine art and film. That's where he basically started. While he was uh, in Trish, he started, uh, no, I'm sorry, let me make sure I got that right. Uh, while he was in uh, Morehouse, he made his very first film called uh, Last Hustle in Brooklyn. From there, you know, he uh, came up with the idea and started uh, the movie uh, she's got to have it and he basically did that film with a hundred and hundred and seventy five thousand dollar budget and uh, it was shot in 1985 and it came out in 86 and it made uh made over seven million so he basically took yeah. the money from that and he formed the uh the, the company has now the production company has now called 40 acres and a mule from there, you know, the, the rest is history, you know, from there he, he made School Days and, uh, you know, Do the Right Thing. Um, my personal favorite, Mo' Better Blues. <laughs> you got Crooklyn, uh, you know, the, 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 the list of films that he's done, it just goes on and on. Uh, I wanted to bring up some of the, uh, the awards that he's gotten, which again, you know, you really don't hear a lot about, you know, the awards that Spice got. He's got an Academy Award, he's got a, a Student Academy Award, he's got two primetime, uh, Emmy Awards. He's got two Peabody Awards. Uh, I mean, he's got uh, just so many different awards that people don't bring up. And uh, just for him bringing, doing, you know, pursuing his passion and bringing his his idea, what he sees in his mind's eye, to the public and making these wonderful stories and bringing us these wonderful characters. And again, you know, we, proof is in the pudding. You know, everybody that comes from his camp has a tendency to 
go on to bigger and better things. You got Denzel, you got uh, Wesley, you got Sam, you know, you name it. You know, everybody that seems to come from this camp just yeah. does really well. And I think a lot of it has to do with his, him, like, allowing people to have uh, their own creativity when it comes to their characters. Uh, I think a lot of times he'll just kind of go with the flow. And if he's, the, the actor has, actor or actress has something extra that they want to put in on the role, you know, he'll allow it just to see how things fall in place with his ideas. And with that freedom, you know, people, the actors and actresses, they kind of can feel, uh, you know, a little bit better about their their acting ability and try you know, make take chances instead of being in such a rigid you know what i mean like a a rigid yeah. uh, uh condition you know where oh i got to do this by the book you know and uh that's why these guys that's why denzel is so smooth that's why wesley the way he is that's why sam <laughs> is the way he is so i just yeah. you know i can't i can't say I, I can't say enough about about what spike has done through the years um Again, I tell you, my personal favorite, two of my per personal favorite films were uh, School Days, of course. We just did that one and then Do the Right Thing. And um, I can remember going to see his films uh, in Jersey when they came out in like the, the, the 80s and 90s. And I mean, it's just max capacity, man. Every seat was full. Um, there wasn't a pin drop in it. That's the difference between going to films now versus back then. I mean, black folks was in there. It was max capacity and you couldn't hear a pin drop everybody was hanging on every single syllable every word coming from that film man and i mean it just it's a beautiful time man. beautiful time yeah you know um it was was crazy as an info on spike i'm a little bit younger than you but you know i'm, I'm born in the 70s so i grew up watching a lot of the same movies so one thing that we forget is that like spike lee directed a lot of music videos oh yeah you know what i'm saying he oh did, yeah um, before he did, she's got to have it. He did White Lines, which I didn't know until recently, by uh, by Melly Mel, and yeah. you know he's done like a ton of you know music videos, you know for yep. Michael Jackson, you know a bunch of bunch of artists. Also, uh, my hip hop array. <laughs> I mean, I would, oh, and, -hop and I would say like my initial too. exposure. That's right. My my initial exposure to Spike Lee was I. Here's the thing, I can't remember if it was She's Gotta Have It First or if it was the Mars Blackman Nike commercials. Mm, yeah, he did Nike. Thank you, because this was 86 when She's Gotta Have It came out. That's the same year oh. I moved from Raleigh, North Carolina to Alaska. Ain't a whole lot of Afrocentric stuff going on in Anchorage, Alaska. So like, right. you know, She's Gotta Have It. I think, you know, I kind of snuck and watched it when it came out on HBO or whatever you know in the 80s but i can't remember which came first i'm pretty sure she's got to have it came first and then he got the mars blackman commercials if i remember correct correct right right yeah because those commercials are in like black and white and for anybody that doesn't know they were nike commercials where you know you played a character named mars blackman he had a big mars gold chain and uh, <laughs> he did commercials he did commercials with michael jordan um really you know looking back on actually when it happened that was like first of all it was a big deal when it happened you know, seeing this, seeing this brother, this young brother up here with Michael Jordan yeah. and looking back on it, you're like, man, that's revolutionary. This dude was, he was promoting Jordans really early. Really early. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you know, looking back on it, it's just, it is kind of a revolutionary thing. And that was my initial exposure to Spike Lee. And, you know, he always, whenever I see him, even now, sitting courtside at a Knicks game, I'm like, that's right. Mars. You know, that's Mars Blackman. <laughs> it, it was it was crazy he's such a big fan he's such a big Knicks fan and yeah. like he always respected Michael Jordan even though Michael Jordan was always killing the Knicks right right you know he was the first one to be like man I noticed Mike, that Mike got a double nickel on us you know what I'm saying like <laughs> so like yeah he was a fan he wasn't a Bulls fan but he was a he was a Jordan fan I think the first movie that I actually went to the movies to see of Spike Lee was uh, Malcolm X uh, that's the, like, right. yeah that's the first movie I actually went to the movies to see uh, of his uh, to this day I love Malcolm X it's one of those movies I can watch over and over again yeah that that, that movie is just it, it broke so many grind, so much ground man it's not even funny man. and the thing is with that film you know he he did so much for that film man he had to do the research and he went to I think he went to Elijah Muhammad and and different ones just to get you know get make sure that everything was good and get the permission to even say certain things or do certain things man so you look at that in itself man you know you're taking a great risk because you know i don't care what anybody says that that's that's touchy ground 
you know, and I mean, you're talking death threats yeah, and everything yeah. else, you know, because they didn't, yeah. people don't play Still like it. that yeah. when it comes to exactly. Yeah. So for him to take that, to, to, to take that risk just to give us, you know, uh, uh, his, his, his own, uh, spin in, of course it was, you know, fact, a lot of stuff was factual, but to give us his spin on the story and everything was just absolutely wonderful for him to just be able to do that. And most folks are like, well, man, look, that's, that's a little bit too much for me. I, I, you know, <laughs> you know the bravery, man. The bravery and the, the, the balls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's got a reputation for it. Man. He's got a reputation for being, being that type of guy on set. Like, hey, this, hey, listen to me. <laughs> and I dig right. that about him a lot, man. But like you were saying, you know, Forty Eight Years and a Mule. The um, as far as commercial wise, he's done stuff for Converse. He's done stuff for Jaguar, Taco Bell, Ben and Jerry's. I mean, he's directed and been involved in a lot of TV stuff. Man, so. What's crazy is one of the movies that a lot of people maybe forget that he directed is uh, Inside Man. Yeah. And that's just, I don't know, for whatever reason, I love that movie. I just, that's one of my favorite Spike Lee movies, the Inside Man. Mm. Um, because it was so, it was almost, it was so against type for him, in my opinion. Mm. You know, it was, it was more of a conventional uh, action thriller heist type movie mm -hmm. and it's not you know from his track record that's not the kind of movie you would have had, would have expected from him right you wouldn't you know put saying? it in there with it like was, a spike lee joint right 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 but that's just one of the movies i really i really appreciate from him just something a little yeah. different but it's a really good movie yeah yeah that denzel was on point in that film i mean I, I can't tell you you know he has a tendency of making people really really like somebody that's great he'll make them really shine like you know because again yeah. i tell you uh do the right thing you know bleak you know being uh you know in charge of that jazz band i mean that man i'm telling you dude, like like i remember me and like a lot of my friends like just you know looking at the clothes and just being all into the character man like you know bleak is bleak is what every man's trying to inspire to <laughs> just the coolness right. was off the <laughs> charts man off the right. charts man. yeah spice spice Spike's a legend in this, and you know this is doing a spotlight on Spike Lee isn't so much about like him not being you know known or anything like that. It's right. just about like showing some appreciation for someone. He's a little, he's a bit more famous than maybe some of the people we'll talk about, but right, it's just showing that appreciation that hey, look, y'all got to understand that coming from some people's point of view, especially a lot of black folks, like Spike is an absolute legend. You may yeah. hate him, you know, yeah. but for some people, he's an absolute legend, and like we ain't gonna let you talk Absolutely. about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, nah. you know, he's like he's Absolutely. like family almost. Like we grew up with his movies. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just it's good to just hey throw a little shine. Like hey y'all, don't forget, don't forget Spike Lee. You know, he's yeah, done some definitely. great. Movies. You may not like every movie he's done, but he's done some absolutely wonderful movies and commercials and uh, music videos. So he, the guy's been right. around a lot. Yeah. And he's still doing stuff outside of his business uh, for 40 Acres and a Mule. If anyone anyone is interested in ordering movies directly from 40 Acres and a Mule, uh, he he signs and autographs everything as he sends it to you. Ah. So, I mean, it's, uh, I've got an autographed copy of Do the Right Thing. I've got an autographed copy of <laughs> My Better Blues in the room. <laughs> yeah. So, if you're interested, yeah. you know, he, he, he offers that, you know, and uh, it's really, really decent, decent guy. I'm about to order. I'm about to order a copy of Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was doing uh, doing Malcolm X, Malcolm X posters too. So, yeah, a lot of autograph oh, nice. stuff comes out of his out of his uh, out, of, out of his business. Like I said, for anybody that that's this is new to you and you don't know much about Spike Lee, uh, pick a film, watch it, uh, watch some interviews with him. You know, uh, on it. there are plenty of them on YouTube, and uh, you know, just dive in, jump down a rabbit hole, man. There's a lot to right. offer. Lot to offer. Well, that was our first spotlight, y'all. That was on Spike Lee. Like Alex said, look him up. If you don't know much about Spike, if you're a young person, like you're like 20 some years old and you don't know much about Spike Lee, go ahead and look him up. Look right. up some of his movies. Look up some clips. If you don't want to watch the whole movie, look up some clips on YouTube. And just see what he's all about. And I feel like you know you'll you'll thank us later. Right. Absolutely. All right. That's the first one, y'all. So we appreciate you watching. Make sure y'all tune back in for more.